In this video, we're going to have a closer look at the Pro's bikes. First of all, it's hard to miss this very dirty bike. What's the story behind this one? This has come straight from eBay. This is uh, Johnny Moscon's bike with the first one he rode that he punctured on yes. um, whilst in that lead breakaway. So we got it bought from a service course straight to here to showcase it yeah. really. So, and yeah. crashed and chain dropped yeah, and yeah. God knows Still has a puncture else. from the race and yeah. stuff. So it is that genuine sort of like pro bike really that's been, been raced at probably the most iconic edition of Roubaix that I've ever seen. Sometimes the riders and the teams change the setup of the bikes. Is there any story behind that? Yeah, so this was the first time that they raced disc brakes as well as a team. So it was kind of a step forward for them in, in technology and that. But it also gave them the opportunity to run 28C tyres. So we went to 28 tubeless on it. Um, there's a couple of little touches that you can see if you kind of look around the bike, such as the grip tape on the cages to stop the bottle sliding out over the cobbles. Um, they run slightly bigger inner chainring than most people would run, so the gap between the two is closer. So if the chain drops off, then you don't lose cadence or the chain starts slapping around. Um, and then other than that, it is the same dogma frame that a consumer could buy today. <laughs> Dogma F is the next iteration of the Dogma kind of family for us and the plan was to launch it for the Tour de France and then for the delayed Olympics so it gave us an opportunity to bring this bike to fruition. We had, um, I guess by our team standards, an okay tool yeah. but it wasn't what we've, we've become used to but the Olympics, it suddenly got turned around and Carapaz yes. rode probably one of the best races we've seen from him and won it. So to celebrate that, what we did is took the frame and obviously everybody wants to add that gold kind of implement to it and how to do it. So we created it in one of our kind of ergo colours, which is this gold shine that you sort of see to it here, uh, into the team kind of black fade for him. We did a number of frames for him. So he has his team frames that live at the team, his training frames that are at home or training bikes as such. And then this is kind of a showcase bike. So it hasn't been ridden by him, but it is one of his spare bikes. So. And are there any special setups for this bike? The only difference is they have a degree of flexibility with their sponsors that they can switch wheels. So yeah. even though they're a Shimano sponsored team, sometimes you see them on Shimano wheels, sometimes you see them on lightweight, sometimes it's Princeton, sometimes it could be anything, it's whatever suits the day really. Chasing those marginal gains. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. We're here with Simon from Specialized and he's going to talk us through this very nice Diverge here. So what's the story? Uh, so yes, this is the Specialized uh, S-Works Diverge, but it isn't a standard bike. This is actually Ian Boswell's bike uh, and he raced this at the Unbound uh, gravel race. Sadly, Ian's a very nice guy and he cleaned the bike for us, um, but you can see some of the battle scars here and on the fork. This is the brand's gravel bike. It's the long distance bad boy. You can take everything with you and have a great adventure. This design is custom uh, made for Ian, Anna Tetrick and Lawrence Tentan. We like to say we invented gravel racing and gravel riding. This design was um, from our original rock combo, um, yeah. which was a bike in the 1980s. It is just a mountain bike with drop handlebars, but yeah. it was kind of our first sort of real deep dive into to gravel and fast gravel, uh, and that's, that's where the bike was born from. So this is a celebration of that. And you can look at the stem, and it's like a 13 centimetre stem. So that's not normal for yeah. off-roading in general. Yeah. Unbound is like, what, 200 mile uh, race. Yes. Um, so he's uh, custom handlebars from Coefficient. Uh, they're there just to allow for more handlebar positions, riding positions, so he can stay comfortable and ultimately a bit aerodynamic. We know that's not everything in yeah. gravel racing, especially with big fat tyres. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of his custom setup to keep comfortable for over a long, long period of time. They also just re look really cool. They look really cool <laughs> as well. Um, really cool. But he also went for our new mirror saddle, which is our, our Roman Evo with mirror. Yeah. Uh, and that's our 3D printed saddle. So that gives that extra comfort yeah. um, and extra support when he needs it, because he does need it.
and we're standing in front of Lizzie Diagnan's bike. What's the story? So not only was it kind of a big milestone that there was the first women's Roubaix, there's also some milestones on this bike. It was the first time Roubaix has ever been won on tubeless tyres. Yeah. Um, certainly the first time in the modern era that it's been won on a one-bike uh, drivetrain system as well. So yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a big, big deal. Are there any other little kind of features to this bike which are kind of specialist to Roubaix? You can see on the top tube here that you have this little sticker that a lot of the riders do this. So this calls out the, the kilometre markers where the cobble sections start and finish. So Lizzie can see really clearly how far she's got to go to the next cobble section and how long that cobble section is. So that's something you see a lot of the Roubaix riders doing. So you sort of often see that on the top tubes. And also you see these little uh, additional shift buttons here. These are our yeah. blip buttons. So these have been stuck here. So Lizzie can, uh, when she's on the, the top, she can still make the gear shift yeah. without having to move to the normal shifter position. Yeah, and I think we've all seen that kind of amazing photo of like the blood-stained handlebars after the race. So an iconic win and an iconic bike.